Better scramble like an egg before you get folded like an omelet, nigga. Man, shut your <laughs> Yeah, I necked a full in on grass. And you know what happened? Nothing. Yeah, nothing happened. I just walked away unscathed and continued to train. Now, of course, I cannot say with certainty how much of that comes down to luck and how much of that comes down to my level of conditioning. But I certainly do believe that if that happened to me only a few years ago, I would have been hospitalized from it and that my level of strength saved me from a lot of trouble there. And that kind of left me wondering, should all trickers lift weights? Well, today I'm going to try to answer that question. So although I have acquired quite a decent level of both tricking skills and strength standards, I didn't want this to just be my opinion. So, I hopped on a call with some of the world's best tricking athletes to find out what they thought about the matter. And I started off by just asking them. Do you even lift? Uh, yeah, the answer is no, I don't lift weights and I, I never really have. Maybe I go to the gym with my friend like maybe like once a month or every couple months. But uh, yeah, no, I've, I've never lifted consistently. Um, yeah, yeah, I do. I do at the moment. It, there's been different phases where I lift more and phases where I lift a lot less. But at the moment, I do like one one lifting session per week uh, for my mm. legs mainly. Uh, I do lift weights. How often do you lift weights? Uh, I do. I go to the gym five days a week. Uh, yes, probably like every other day. Yes, I do, and it's very varying amount. It depends on. What my goal is, well, I would say uh, at the moment it's four to six times per week right now. That's like my goal at the moment to lift as much as possible. But in the past it has been like once a week, even, le even less sometimes. I definitely think trickers should lift weights. I know that you don't need to lift weights, you can get away with it. But um, I think there's a lot of potential in lifting as, as any athlete in any sport that if you're not doing it, I think you're missing out on quite a few quite a few like untapped resources for sure it's just an easy way to increase the amount of resistance in a range of motion i think it really depends on the person to be I, I think it depends on like loads of factors like what what their goals are within tricking and where they're currently at and then what their body is already like like i think some people yeah could probably do with a lot of lifting some people could do with spending a lot more time on other things like so some people would benefit a lot more from just losing weight. I think tricking is primarily a skill-based thing. It's far less mm -hmm. about strength. So, much. so I think you don't want to lift to the point where it's affecting your skill work. So I, I try to find like a good balance with that. At least for me, uh, lifting weights helped so much with getting stronger at tricks. Because every time I tried to get stronger at tricks without lifting, it just ended up going pretty badly in the end. I didn't really like get so, many, so much gains. Uh, most of my tricking gains actually came in periods uh, when I had lifted a lot of weights before starting to trick again. For example, for uh, some injury. I had injury, I rehabbed, I lifted a lot of weights, got stronger at the lifts. And after that, I started tricking more and I got so much better at tricks. Every single sport that has to do with explosiveness, they do some kind of weight training, like definitely in every single other sport. Uh, even the yeah, trickers do it, but I feel like not so many trickers like lift weights in like such intense way. Yeah, I feel like many people could definitely benefit from lifting more weights. I, th I think it does help with injury prevention and just just longevity in the sport and not not getting so many of the like long term, you know, the injuries that like build over time rather than just the big hits. Uh, so I, I do think it's important. I just don't think it's the most important thing. I think there's far more important things. I think most people are not injured. It's not because they didn't lift. It's because of poor decisions. There's probably like five or six years where I didn't lift through my tricking and it was uh, pretty great. Yeah, it wasn't mm -hmm. a problem at all. And when I looked at my own injuries and injuries of my friends and stuff, it's pretty much always just because of bad decisions. Like I, so I, I try to tackle the bad decisions more than anything. And that's led me to like have way less injuries over the last five years than I did from the five years before that. 
Like I, I get injured, yeah, way, way less than I used to. And it's um, it's just because of different decisions. That that's It's just made such a huge difference. Whereas when I added lifting, then it's like a slight difference, but making better decisions is just huge. I see lifting and conditioning in general, kind of like wearing a seatbelt in a car. But then I think it's far more important how you drive that car. Like if you're speeding around at 100 miles an hour through red lights, then you might get lucky. You might crash and the seatbelt might save you. But if you do that enough times, then you, you're going to be fucked up. So. <laughs> so for me, one of the absolute biggest pros for tricking specifically, it's got to be the injury prevention. I have saved myself from severe injury so many times just by proxy from the weights that I've been lifting, like being stronger in general, having stronger joints, being more resilient, recovering faster, all of that. I, I can attribute all of that to lifting weights because before I was lifting, I was not conditioned for tricking and I was getting injured all the time. And now I rarely ever get injured. Or if I do, I recover way faster because the injury is not as bad as it could have been. For example, squatting, it gets your body into a pretty compromised position and then you have to like build strength in that position. Like you never really want to land a trick crunched like that ever. But if you do land a trick crunched, I feel like you're going to be a lot better off if you've put in a lot of reps doing squats. Now, what exactly does James mean by that? Well, in tricking, you tend to take off and land with fairly straight legs. That's just the strongest position for pops, swings, and basically everything else. And even when doing standing flips, your knees usually don't bend that much. But what if you land in a position like that? Well, in that case, you still want your knees to be strong so you can take a lot of impact without hurting your knee joint or your tendons. That's why doing squats with a full range of motion is not only incredible for performance, but also for injury prevention. We're gonna touch on that a bit later. I also want to touch on another problem that trickers might face muscular imbalances. When I first started going to the gym, I really noticed that my back, my neck, my core and my leg was stronger on the left side. The reason for that, I twist to the left. So every time I twist, my left side is squeezing here. The same obviously goes for my leg. Every time I take off from a cork, most of the work is being done by my left leg. Weight training has helped me strengthen my whole body. It fixed all of my muscular imbalances. And I think that that is going to save me from a lot of trouble down the line. Yeah, buddy. Spam dubs. And I think it's going to save you from a lot of trouble as well. If, if you just trick your left leg will get strong in very different way than your ooh, <laughs> right <laughs> leg will get yeah so like i feel like tricking is one of the most imbalancing sports for the body muscle imbalances are a huge problem in tricking and yes uh lifting is one of the ways that you can combat these muscle imbalances by strengthening the um the underutilized muscles that are, you know, causing the imbalances from overuse on one side. Like some years ago when I only did tricking and in, within tricking mostly only did twisting, I for sure had muscle imbalances because my lower back literally hurt like all the time, like like every sesh, like never let up on me. Like it was on and off, but it literally always hurt. And it only went away when I started doing parkour and free running stuff and started not only doing twisting. So I think um, any muscle imbalances that I have now are probably a lot less significant just because I'm, I'm doing like a lot more linear movements. One of the biggest pros of lifting as well is just strength. Like I know that kind of sounds obvious, but the stronger you are, the, the more power you can put into your tricks. So even if it's not directly correlated to skill like tricking it's a very skill-based sport if you're physically stronger you are in a better position to learn those skills it's a lot easier you're able to strengthen range of the motion with increased resistance that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise from just body weight alone so in comparison to like a calisthenics approach which typically uses just your body weight 
um, you are able to increase the load, which is very helpful when we're trying to increase our strength and stability and our overall output. But um, one of the cons of just lifting alone would be that you're just building the mass and strength, but you're not teaching those muscle fibers how to fire very quickly and with the explosive power that you want as a tricking athlete, which is someone who I believe should be very like lean and, and functionally strong and fast and explosive. And we want like a lot of like fast twitch muscle fiber. So uh, uh, lifting would be a really great way to build that muscle mass. And then I think that you should pair it with some kind of explosive um, training to kind of teach the muscle mass how to trick. I think for some people, it could help a lot with performance. People that are especially weak. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think for a lot of people, I, again, I, I think it's one of those where, yeah, it does help performance, but I think it's just nowhere near the biggest factor. And I think a lot of people put a lot too much energy into that when there's just way more important factors that would help a lot more like their technique and just their overall approach to training and uh, flexibility and mobility as well. You get stronger and tricking gets better until a point. The more muscle you put on to an extent is helpful. And then once you surpass the limit of what I would deem necessary muscle for this sport, you're going into the territory of making your tricks harder. You know, you're getting bigger, you're changing your center of mass. Like sometimes that can make it harder to trick for sure. I've experienced it. I've done some pretty heavy bulks. I'm sure you can insert a picture or two. I'll send you some um, at those body weights, you know, <laughs> But 90 kilos plus higher body fat percentage like sometimes you need to do that to build muscle and that is definitely not an easy place to be tricking i remember landing dub dubs trip falls at that weight and then i cut down it got super lean and i was absolutely blown away by how easy they were how shocked like i've done some crazy stuff after cutting that i never would have been able to do with that body weight i just don't think it was physically possible for me there's just more mass to move around but um, I feel like you can get around that with technique and just like being powerful, I guess. And I like started when I was super skinny um, and I kept training really consistently through my like while I was growing like through puberty. Like a lot of the trickers who started like before puberty, they just grow into a really good tricking body and without lifting, then they're like pretty set. <laughs> So I didn't feel like any any one day where I was like, whoa, I'm like an inch taller now. This is like way harder because I was just really consistent. So everything just continued to feel the same. Um, and uh, my technique got better and stuff, too. So because I'm, I'm just really interested in the topic of like how people get really good at tricking as a whole. So that's I'd say that's what I'm most interested in in my whole life. And I've been like, yeah, really through that for the last like 14 years and james is one of the biggest anomalies in tricking he fits the mold in uh, in lots of senses that he started like as a small child and had great access to training but just his body type is like yeah really out there for what he's able to do yeah i mean we're just not i don't think we're at the the level of skill and technique where body type actually becomes like a huge factor like, certainly is a factor but it's like i don't think there's any trick that currently exists that i can't do because i'm tall you know like it's just a matter of like putting in the work and technique maybe when we get super crazy then you'll you'll see kids who are like doing stuff that they can literally only do because they're like so small but i don't think we're there yet i feel like oftentimes many people are kind of fixated in like some way that they need to be uh, some some weight like they have some weight, goal weight that they need to achieve and they get like i need to be in this way to perform my best i never really like felt this be like it comes down to like how you get the weight to your body like what, what is uh, the weight coming from what exercises is it mostly muscle mostly fat like these kind of things when you bring up someone like james i feel like he's a bit of a genetic freak i don't I don't know how many Jameses we're going to see in tricking. Like, I think there are a lot of people in my situation with more average genetics that could get a lot out of lifting. Whereas someone like James, he's so one of a kind. Like, he just, he just is, yeah, there's never going to be another James, at least for a while. But if, if James started lifting weights and got even more jacked, like, potentially he would be even better, which is crazy to think about. Um, and I know Shosei and Zen, I know they do 
conditioning. I know they train core. I've seen them in their vlogs doing leg raises, you know. I don't know how much of that they do, but they do some form of calisthenics with their training. I don't know how seriously they take it, but I think if they if they lifted weights and, you know, even put on like two to five kilos of lean mass at most, but focused on power output, focused on building strength and longevity and their joint health as well. I think that they would they would squeeze that extra, you know, five or ten percent out of their power. I think it's a smaller smaller part of it, but you know, you never know until you see it. And I think that that's definitely worth exploring. I actually I started doing flips when I was ten. Now I'm at twenty eight, so it's been like eighteen years since I started doing flips in some form. And I've been trekking since I was like 14, 15, somewhere around there. Uh, I did not always lift weights and I actually started doing it first time, like intensely when I was 17 or 18. So I feel like I noticed so many benefits uh, when I started doing like uh, squats, deadlifts, like especially these two exercises in the past because I, I was so weak when I started at them like my one rep max was something like 80 kilos for squat and I improved it to like 120 in kind of short amount of time and I noticed so many gains in tricking at that time but then uh, I had like periods when I did not lift I lifted every time I did not lift I felt kind of kind of bad compared to when I lifted I'm like damn I'll be 24 at the end of this year. Uh, been like tricking for 10 years. I feel like uh, it's in my best interest now to you really try and preserve my ability to train at this level. Otherwise, it's gonna you know be gone too soon. I think if you're moving heavy weight through a large range of motion, that's just like extra blood flow to those joints, extra mobility. It's it's the game changer for how long you can be in the sport. Like I, I'm curious to see how long I can trick for, but I think now that I'm lifting weights, it's gonna be a lot longer than if I wasn't. So what can we take away from this? I myself am a huge proponent of lifting. I believe that if you lift weights, you will live a longer, better and healthier life. And it has drastically improved the quality of my life for sure. For tricking specifically, I do believe that you can get some benefits out of a little bit of lifting. But if you go overboard, if you train like a bodybuilder, if you eat like a bodybuilder and get too big too fast, you will notice your tricking suffering significantly. So if you want to find out how to improve your tricking, how to reduce your injury risk, and how to just get stronger and healthier overall, I'll give you three exercises that I think are very beneficial for tricking and then I'll also tell you how to implement them into your training plan. I'm not going to give any form advice in this video. There are already thousands of videos out there of people far more qualified than me explaining how to do these movements correctly. Please take your time to learn the correct technique before you ever go heavy on these movements. Yeah, that's it. Here is the first movement I would recommend to every tricker. This is the bubble back squat. Squats will strengthen your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your posterior chain, so your lower back and all the muscles along your spine, as well as your core and a few other muscles as well, but those are the main muscles that are being worked in a squat. And it's just hugely beneficial for tricking and also for general life. The second lift I would recommend is the deadlift. Deadlifts will also strengthen your quads, glutes and hamstrings with a little bit more of a focus on the glutes and hamstrings and they will massively strengthen your posterior chain and lower back but they will also strengthen your upper back and traps so your neck will be protected which is of course very important for tricking as I should know. The movement pattern of the deadlift is also very similar to a lot of tricking movements if you look at swings and pops it's kind of a similar starting position and you can see how you also raise your chest up in the same way that being said i don't think that a lift has to be similar to a trick to be beneficial for it i just think it has to strengthen the muscles that you need for it but it is a cool bonus point i guess now a big con with deadlifts is that the fatigue you get from deadlifts is super high the systemic fatigue the muscular fatigue it is definitely even higher than squats. So if you're tricking a lot and you're trying to manage your fatigue, you might wanna go easy on the deadlifts or not do them at all. 
So in that case, I'm gonna recommend the next exercise, barbell rolls. Barbell rolls are going to strengthen your upper back and your traps, and they will help you get rid of some of the muscular imbalances you get from twisting, which is probably very beneficial for your spine. And they will also protect your neck for when you're falling onto your neck as you do in tricking. And they will also strengthen your lower back, which is also great for tricking. Now that we know what to do, how do we implement these exercises into our training? Well, if your main focus is tricking, I would probably recommend doing these exercises once a week. For the first few weeks, I would focus on just dialing in the technique. So stay away from failure, don't do too many sets, do a moderate amount of reps, so 5 to 20 reps maybe, and really focus on good technique. Once you have the technique down, that's when you start going heavy. I would recommend aiming for 2 to 6 reps while leaving about 2 to 3 reps in the tank. I would keep the volume down and stay away from muscular failure as you want to manage your fatigue so you can still trick multiple times a week. In the first few weeks to months you can probably add weight to the bar every single session. After that it'll start slowly slowing down but you can still add more weight over time and that's very important. You always want to stay progressively overloading, so adding more weight over time or doing more reps. After some time you will hit a plateau with this training style because the volume and the intensity is just not high enough to make consistent gains over a long period of time. But I think if your main focus is tricking performance, that's fine. Just milk your newbie gains, get strong in the squat and the deadlift or the row and you will see significant improvements in your tricking in my opinion. These recommendations are for people who already trick and have a basic level of strength. If you're just starting out and you're very weak and unathletic, you will benefit from both massive muscle growth and strength improvement. So in that case, I would recommend more lifting than just these exercises. You also can do a lot more lifting than this while still keeping your tricking at a high level, but I don't think it's gonna get you any more benefits for tricking. If you are a beginner or you're just interested in getting jacked, strong and lean, I will be making a video on that as well, so subscribe if you want to see that. If you have any more questions or thoughts about this topic, please leave them in the comments below, I would love to hear them. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who was in this video, I left a link to their social media in the description below, you can check them out, they're all incredible athletes and people and I'm very thankful because I couldn't have made this video without them. If you want to see more videos like this and help me spread tricking to a larger audience, any kind of engagement is very very helpful. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.